Hello, friends. Welcome to Level Up with Debbie Neal. I am your host. There is nowhere I would rather be than right here, right now with you. This podcast is all about leveling up in all aspects of our lives. Thank you for being here. I am so grateful. I'm excited to be on this journey with you. Together, we are leveling up. You ready? Hello, my Level Up family. Last week, we spoke about competition, and so often we think we are competing against others, but we're competing against our best self. In last week's episode, I went over nine areas that we're competing in. And so a few of those things are procrastination, our own like ability or not ability to procrastinate, right? What we're doing, your ego and your level of discipline to name a few, right? So you can go back to last week's episode and listen to the nine. This week's topic was and is, right? What we talked about, if your path is more difficult is because your calling is higher. And as I was planning this episode and sitting down, my gosh, it was like, it was like divine timing. So I watched my church online. So the church that I watch is Christ Fellowship. I, I have another home in Palm Beach. And when I'm there, I go in person. And when I'm in New Jersey, I watch it online. And a member of our church who also always give sermons at our church is John Maxwell. Like how blessed am I? So he gave the sermon this past Sunday. Now I'm not, you're listening to this weeks out. And I truly, the, the, the whole sermon truly touched me and it gave a similar message to if your path is more difficult, it is because your calling is higher. And he was talking about stables, right? So he was obviously talking about Jesus and Jerusalem and the birth of Jesus and and stables. Jesus was born in a stable. So he was talking about stables in our lives, representing disappointment and how the ability to see God in every single situation. So I really... I'm excited to share that message with you today, right? So I basically took that message. I'm going to share that message with you, but then we're going to add on to it. How can we look at this message and really like sit on this and realize how we can level up? So this, so, so basically I want to give all this credit to John Maxwell, and then you could see where we've added on. So this story is especially special because it's the holiday season. And I know that no matter what religion you're a part of, we will all be able to relate to this. And I'm excited for all of us to know that we were made for more. Our calling is higher. There is a divine plan for our life and we may not always understand it at the time. And this is where trust comes in. This is where your faith shows up. So how do we turn disappointments into divine appointments? So Again, we've talked about this, the gift in the valley, right? The gift in the obstacle, the lesson in the failure. What do we do when we follow a star and find a stable? What happens when you have high expectations? Like you're chasing this majestic star. Maybe you followed it for days. Maybe it's been months. Maybe it's been years. And then all of a sudden it stops. So disappointment is the gap between expectation and reality. What do we have in common with the wise men? And we all have stables in our life. Every one of us have had times in our life where our expectation was high and we found a stable. We were looking for something bigger. We were looking for something better. So let's look at the stables in the wise men's lives. And we're going back to the birth of Jesus. And then we're going to apply it to ourselves. The wise men followed a star in the sky to find the newborn king. The wise men took a journey knowing like the star was significant, like underneath this star was the birth of Jesus. And during their journey, they lost sight of the star. Sometimes they saw it. Sometimes they couldn't see it. And in their minds, the king of kings would, of course, be born in a palace, right? They had a vision of where they were going. And when they finally found the king, he wasn't born in a palace. They found him in a stable. So they were expecting a palace, 
would a king be born in a stable? And those wise men had high hopes and came to found a stable. So some of you, if this is, if you don't follow Jesus, still stay with me here. Okay. And if you do follow Jesus, you're going to see like an even bigger gift than this because the stables, which when he went on to talk about are representing something that we come across that we're just not expecting. We're expecting something bigger. We're expecting something better. The difference between wise men and us, and we could say wise women, why, you know, just, but I'm referring to the story. Okay. They take disappointments and they turn them into divine appointments. They take something that is small and insignificant and they turn it into something huge and very significant, which we all have the power to do. They find something that is disappointing and find out it is incredibly enlightening. So how do we do this? And every one of us have stable stories in our lives. So I want you to think about times in your life, okay, times in your life, in in your business and or your business where you had really high hopes and then and then those those high hopes were gone. You had an opportunity, you had a vision, you had a dream. And then it was vanished, right? And so what I'm going to go over is what John Maxwell went over. And I'm going to go over three things that wise men do, that every one of us can do it. We can all do it. So how many of you, he did like a show of hands in the audience, like how many of you would like to be wise? Like we want to be wise in our business. We want to be wise in our relationships. We want to be wise in our success. We want, that's why we're here to level up and become the person and the leader that we were meant to be. Okay. So number one, Wise men look for God in the stable. A God perspective, right? To have a God perspective is the ability to see God in every situation. And so often we think if the situation didn't go as planned, God must have forgotten about us. Like, And, and you guys, there's been times I've lost faith in my life thinking, where was God? Why would this have happened? I was not seeing the stable at the time. It's the ability to see him in the palace. It's also the ability to see him in the stable. So in other words, we don't just see him when things are going amazing for us. We see things when we're coming across things that we didn't expect. If we look for God in every situation, we find him there. He's there. We see what we're looking for. And there is a difference between looking at something versus looking for something. So what does that mean? So you come across an obstacle, you come across an adversity, you have a failure, you have a heartbreak. When you look at it, you see what is, right? You're looking at your life, you're looking at your business through a straw. God must not be here. This might not, this is obviously not meant to be. Woe is me. Maybe I'll pull back. You see the obstacle. When you look for, right? So you're looking for God, You're finding the gift. We don't see things as they are. This is pretty powerful. We see things as we are, as we are. So are you looking at things through eyes of gratitude and love and abundance and faith and joy, knowing that there's a reason, having faith and a reason? How we view things is how we do things. With a God perspective, we can look at the stables in our life and see God in every single situation. When we look for God, he gives us strength. And and I know many of us have heard this, but it's so true. What is meant for evil, God does for good. So we might be thinking, why do we get tested? Why? Because we're made for more. If your if your challenges are bigger, your calling is higher. You're here to push through, to grow through to the next le- level. So look at your surroundings, but look for God in your surroundings. When we are looking at our stable, looking at our circumstances and not looking for God in the circumstances, you guys, we have a problem then, Right. We have a problem. So like, just look at your, your business. Have you ever like looked at your business or your job or your profession and, and like focused on something that seems big, but it's actually really small. But then the longer you focus on it, you've got a problem. And this is when we ask ourselves, like, where's God? Why would that have happened? Maybe he's telling me it's not me, you know, meant to be. What is this meant for? What is this leading me to? What am I supposed to learn? These are the gifts. Look 
for God in the stable. When you walk up to your stable experience, don't walk away from it. So often we think that like this is not what we wanted, right? And maybe I'm going to pray and maybe God will change it. So like when you come up against a challenge, maybe you've put out a goal last month or the month before and it didn't go the way you wanted or last year for that matter. Are you pulling back? Are you walking away? Are you playing small? Are you justifying and saying maybe this isn't meant to be? Then you know what, my friends, you've missed it. You've missed it. Maybe you're praying for God to change this and for the right people and the right circumstances and the right diagnosis to come along. He's in the stable. You're waiting on him and he's already there. He's in the inside. And this is when we miss it. So think about it. How many of you have had a few stables in your life? And quite honestly, how many of you have had stables in the last two years? Here's the question. What separates us and helps us to be wise is to look for God in the stable. Don't let your disappointment cause you to lose the treasure in the challenge. The treasure, there's treasure. I can honestly look back on challenges that I've had in my life and be like, wow, there was such a treasure there. Don't walk around it. Don't walk away from it. Don't wait on it. God is in the stable. He's in the circumstance. What separates us and helps us be wise is we look for God in the stable. Put God before you. Put the stable behind you and see the big picture, right? So I want you to put God before you, put the stable behind you, right? So you're putting faith in front of you. You're putting the obstacle behind you and you're seeing the big picture. You're seeing your vision. You're knowing that you're made for more. But here's what most people do. They put the stable before them, in front of them, and they put God behind them. So they see the obstacle. They see the problem. They they see the failure and they're putting the faith behind them because they're thinking, well, if, if God was around, if there's, this wouldn't happen, right? Most people only see God when things are good, right? You get something great in your life. Oh, thank God. Oh, he's amazing, right? But faith is seeing God in the bad. Nothing is more limiting than when we try to fit God into our expectations. If you have a God that fits in your expectations, your God is too small. Like when I heard that, that's really powerful because the God that we serve is way beyond what we can imagine within our life. And I've had disappointments in my life. I've had stables. And and for those of you that, that follow my story, I'll share, I'm going to share maybe a couple of stables today. We'll see. But here's one that I can absolutely think of. I was 21 years old and I was in the hospital. And after 24 hours of being in the hospital, the doctor came in and told me, I'm really sorry to tell you this, but you are never going to be a mom. You're never going to be a mom. You don't have the ability to have children. And, you know, at 21 years old, I wasn't in a position of my life where I was thinking of a family yet, but I always had this dream inside my heart that, of course, I'm going to be a mom. And so for about 24 hours, I was broken. I was broken. Um, Where was God? Why did this happen to me? Why do I have to suffer even more? I don't understand. And you guys, I was in a stable. I was in a stable. Now, I look at my life now. I am a mom and I have four incredible children, incredible children. Now, here's what I know. The gap between a major disappointment and pain in my life to becoming a mom was about, let's say, 21. I had my first baby. I think I broke it 26, 26 maybe, 27. Anyway, there was a lot of growth there. There was a lot of finding gifts. There was a lot of overcoming. I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for that, for that time that I spent in the stable. So here's the thing. In life, We can connect the dots. We can connect the dots looking backward, but we can't connect the dots looking forward. So what do I mean by that? I'm 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 actually 51 now. My birthday is December 10th. By the time you guys hear this, I'm already going to be 51, not 51 yet on recording day, but on, on drop day, I am. Okay. So 
Now at 51, I could look back and connect the dots at that point in my life and be like, wow, I totally know the gift in the stable. I can connect the dots going backwards, but I couldn't connect the dots going forward at 21. At 21, it made no sense. At 21, it really hurt. At 21, I didn't understand where God was. And that is why trust and obedience is essential when it comes to God. It doesn't make sense on the front end. Don't try to make sense of it when you're in the stable. Embrace the stable. Embrace it in your heart. We were born for stables. We were born to become more. Your calling is higher. Number two, when we come to a stable, when we are disappointed, when it's not what we expected, there is a tendency to not give our best. Like, wow. That, I mean, think about that. Think about, let, let's think about that when it comes to leveling up in our success. Have you set a goal and missed it? Have you, you know, a million different things. So there's a tendency to not give our best, to play small, to pull back, to retract, to play on the safe side. We're so afraid of putting ourselves out on that skinny branch again. What if it doesn't work? When we're disappointed, we withhold, we begin to pull back. And we could think about this in our business, whether it's rejection, whether it's people leaving us, whether it's cancellations, whether it's a lack of success, maybe we worked hard for the next level and missed our goal. Maybe it's fear of losing what you have built. So you just, you stare at what is instead of forgetting what you're made of, forgetting what, what built you to where you are today in the first place. Stop moaning, stop moaning, get over it. This line was so powerful. You can't moan and lead at the same time. <gasps> Think about that. You can't moan and lead at the same time. Leaders don't complain. Leaders don't make excuses. Leaders don't moan. You can't moan. You got to find the gift. Get up. Stand up, right? So here's another stable story for you, you guys, okay? Another stable story for me. So it was, it was 2020, okay? And... There was a significant amount of income, significant amount of income, and the details are not really important, that that I felt at the time left my family, like, like it left my family. It was, it was a significant amount of income. And when I was in the stable, I couldn't understand why. When I was in the stable, I felt unjust. I felt angry. I felt betrayed. I felt, where was God? How could he let this happen? Why? I, there was so much pain. Okay. And then I don't, and I think I shared this on a podcast going back where I really talked about um, my tithing journey. And, and I'll give you guys an abbreviation of my tithing story. It's actually a really good time of year to share it again because it's Christmas time. So I always felt like I was generous. I always felt like I donated. I always felt like I gave, but I was not giving 10% of my income. Now I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to tell you what to do because trust me, people tried to pass that on to me when I wasn't ready to hear it. And I, I, there was a part of me thinking 10%, like, are you out of your mind? And so if you really think of the story and going back to like, you know, the wilderness and, 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 you know, mana and they're always being enough and, and giving to God first and all of these things. So while I was in my stable, I was looking for all the lessons. And quite honestly, there were so many lessons in that stable. Like the, the actual thing that happened that I thought was the stable or so it was that, that was just a gift for me to find the gift inside the stable for me to find God. And so I viewed that amount of money that left my life as a big amount. But I think a couple of things. God was saying, if you think this is a lot, your bar is not higher enough. You're made for more. If your calling is higher, if your if your obstacle is bigger, you're made for more. So if you think this is a lot, we need to expand your vision. Number two, if you really follow the laws of prosperity, and I was reading again while I was in my stable, Catherine Ponder, Catherine Ponder. So I found her while I was in my stable and I read all of her books. And she talks about the dynamic laws of prosperity and success. And the wealthiest people throughout history always gave 10% of their income, their gross income, not their net income, not after expenses. They gave their first 10%. They, they offered their best to God. 
I wasn't doing that. You guys, I wasn't doing that. And so if you really follow the laws of prosperity, it basically says, if you don't, you're going to end up paying that money. You're going to end up paying that money, whether it's in a bill, in an expense, in an unexpected thing, you're going to be paying that money. So you're either going to give it or you're not. So long story short, at the, I believe the the reason for my stable is that God was saying, you have enough. And if you're not going to give me first, if you're not going to give glory to God, I'm going to take it. I just took this amount and you're going to be fine. Like I was, you guys, I panicked. I was ready to sell every 401k I had. Okay. And I had more than enough to survive. Okay. But our mind goes to crazy places. And what he was really saying is you have enough. You can give 10% to me. And so ever since then, I've been on a tithing journey and that was summer of 2020. So again, there was a stable, but God was in the stable. He was in the stable and there were so many gifts. So I'm sorry for that long-winded story. Okay, number three, when wise men enter a stable, the stable changes them. So we all have stable stories. The question is, do you see God in the stable? The stable experiences for all of us are good for us. God is in the stable. We cannot connect the dots looking forward. We can only connect the dots looking backward. Again, the stable story that I I just shared with you, when I was in it, all I saw was why did this happen? And I could not in the moment see the gift. But now looking back, I think of all the gifts that have happened since summer of 2020, God was in the stable and I had a lesson to learn and I was made for more and my calling is higher. And he knew I have so many more lives to impact and so much more abundance. But if I was not going to give glory to God first and give him my first and my best, he was going to withhold quite a bit of things. So I now can connect the dots going backwards, right? So if we can't connect the stables looking forward, when things don't make sense at the time, what do we do? And this is where we need to have the God perspective. We need to see him in every stable. When we don't, we miss the gift. We miss what's meant for us. We miss the lesson. We miss the challenge. We miss the opportunity to grow. God is too good to be unkind. He's too wise to be confused. Even if you can't trace his hand, you can always trust his heart. We all have stables in our life. That's not the question. The question is, do we see God in the stable? Have you been looking at a stable in your life for way too long? Like, are you looking at this thing and wondering why and shrinking back and not living to your potential and thinking you have more days on earth? Like we ha- we're we here for such a blink. Have you been looking at the stable, but not looking for God? Are you Are you literally pausing your life and your joy And your gratitude and your love because you're so lost in a heartache. If your stable is big, it's because your calling is higher. So next week, we're going to be talking about the push. Next week, we will be a week left in 2022. What are you going to be between now and then? Are you leaning in or are you pulling back? Are you giving it your all or have you written off 2022 and you're basically going to start off 2023 with a clean, fresh start? My friend, and I'm saying this with love, if you're waiting until next year, my guess is that this isn't the first year that you're waiting till next year. How many more years are you going to put off your potential? You are made for more. So I'm wishing you all a very, very Merry Christmas, a very happy holiday, whatever it is you and your loved ones celebrate. I love you and I'm so grateful to be here with you.